Our next speaker will be John Dale, and John is going to be talking about JPEG XS and the work that the VSF has been doing there. Hopefully, you should have the JPEG XS interoperability activity group slide there. Okay, uh, let's get going. Okay, just a few slides on the this activity. This is uh, uh, this activity is very close to being completed right now. So. Um, We'll go through and provide an overview and uh, exactly where we are. Uh, JPEG XS is a standard um, for low latency real-time applications, um, and it offers near lossless, visually lossless quality with low complexity. Um, applications, uh, certainly applications that we're considering are uh, SD, HD, um, UHD uh, with HDR and uh, wide color gamut content, um, just some uh, approximate values near lossless at six to one, visually lossless at up to 10 to one, um, smooth um, lossy compression beyond, um, robust over multiple um, coding cycles and lower, lower power consumption compared to other compression models based on its lower complexity. Um, so this does make it ideal for um, contribution uh, video applications, high quality video applications. And um, as you've seen in some of the other presentations, this could be used um, with some of the other um, activity groups um, applications for um, transmission of high quality uh, video. So what was the objective or output of this team? Um, to create a technical recommendation, primarily focused on WAN applications, which utilizes JPEG XS coding, um, and MPEG-2 TS, uh, SMPTE 2022-2 encapsulation. That is the TR-07 document. Um, also creating a recommendation focused on LAN applications for JPEG XS, coding utilizing SMPTE 2110-22 encapsulation, which is the TR-08 application. So um, this team has created both of those. Um, and part of this uh, may be a little bit different than what we've done in the past is that we, uh, we look to create interoperability capability sets, which include multiple interop points for a specific target application um, or a conformance level. Um, so there's applications and conformance levels um, for typical broadcast formats, which would be the roughly 2K um, formats and frame rates. There's also um, a level for a 4K and 8K resolutions, including HDR and wide color gamut. Um, and then the third one is a new area, um, applications and conformance levels for multimedia extensions. And this includes some RGB 444 at 8-bit uh, and 12-bit depths. Um, so the, the interoperability points in the past have been specific points. We've changed this to capability sets in these two documents. Um, which allows for implementations to comply to just a specific um, conformance level and capability set. Um, so uh, further um, objectives um, to include um, applicable recommendations for a complete system, including audio, ancillary data, and, and uh, robust transmission. Um, we do intend, uh, as soon as we get the documentations completed, to organize a file exchange uh, online um, workshop uh, so that we can uh, take a look at uh, implementation files using um, these two uh, documents. Um, and uh, one or two of the other standards that we reference, um, we're participating in helping those move through their committees and get published. Uh, the IETF um, draft for JPEG access, uh, which is now at um, revision 13, um, is nearly complete. We referenced the draft, but we think that that will be completed within our time frame. So um, we've been helping move that along. This is just a, a, a quick snapshot of what I meant when I said um, conformance level and capability sets. So you see displayed is the full HD, FHD um, conformance level. And for that, we have several uh, capability sets uh, in order to have a 
compliance, you need not comply to all of the capability sets, um, but to a single capability set. And then we have interoperability points um, assigned for each one of those capability sets and conformance levels. And then the implementation would have to comply to all of those interoperability points within that capability set um, for that conformance level. So it's a little bit um, a little bit broader than what we've done in the past, but still um, implementations can be targeted at a very specific uh, use case. So just a note on liaisons and um, industry standards, I mentioned before that um, we, we have been working with the IETF on the uh, JPEG access. This applies for the uh, TR08 um, uh, document using 2110.22. And that RTP spec is a, is a big um, portion of that. Um, we're also coordinating with other um, VSF activity groups through participation of our members um, and um, other reference documents that we reference in these, um, for instance, the ISO IEC and ITU JPEG documents are all complete. So give you a status, I mentioned before that we are very nearly complete. Um, the editing team has been meeting regularly. We are at final review. Um, we have, uh, like I mentioned before, we've crossed membership uh, with other activity groups to keep everyone in sync. TR07 has had minor changes. Final review is complete. Now waiting um, on the confirmation um, for our JPEG XS RAN licensing availability, which is supposed to be available this quarter. So we're looking forward to that um, very soon. Um, Ongoing final review of TR08, um, which is going on now. We have another meeting tomorrow. Um, hopefully within one or two meetings, we will complete that. Um, uh, we're also uh, waiting on the JPEG XS RAN licensing, since that's the same for both the TR07 and TR08 um, documents. Um, and of course, the uh, publication of the JPEG XS RFC. Um, so we haven't discussed the file exchange workshop, but that will be taken up shortly as soon as we complete the TR08 document. Um, and uh, as I mentioned, I expect that we will have the documents completed within the next two weeks since we're at the final um, review right now. Publication, we'll have to wait on um, the uh, RAN licensing, but again, we expect that uh, fairly soon. So that's um, that's the wrap up on JPEG XS. Excellent. Thank you very much, John. Appreciate that.